Transylvania. Evokes visions of thick pine trees, treacherous cliffs, and foggy terrain, the eerie woods of our childhood dreams. Have you ever heard of the curse of Vlad Tepes? The story goes that Romania's bottomless well of tyranny, catastrophe, and overall human misery can all be traced back to one terrifying ruler and his supernatural evil. In Romania, they call him Vlad Tepes, that is, Voivode the Impaler. Did you know that Vlad the Impaler was the childhood friend of Mehmed the Conqueror? Now, we go to the 15th century. To the regions of Wallachia, Moldavia, and Ardell. Roughly the territory of present-day Romania. Our hero, or rather the hero of the Romanians, Vlad, was born in 1431 in the city of Saigasora. His father is a nobleman. His father's name is Vlad and he is in exile there at that time, but his exile life will not last long. Because, thanks to Sultan Murad II, Father Vlad sits on the Wallachian throne one day. There is a tradition at that time. If a voivode ascended the throne with the help of the Ottoman state, he would send his sons to the Ottoman palace. As a guest, perhaps as a hostage. And Vlad was sent to the palace with his 11-year-old younger brother Radu. He comes to Edirne. Because Istanbul has not been conquered yet and the Ottoman sultan lives in his palace in Edirne. By the way, who else is in this palace? Shahzada Mehmed, that is, the person who will conquer Istanbul. He is almost the same age as Vlad. Some historians even say that they established a very good friendship there. Some even go so far as to mention that they are blood brothers. We don't know that much, but Vlad made good use of the time there. There are some who say that he learned the Ottoman culture, learned the language, comprehended the Ottoman traditions very well, became very close to Sultan Murad II and even became his favorite. Some time will pass, when the year 1447 comes, young Vlad's father, Voivoda Vlad, is killed by a conspiracy. With the help of the Hungarian king, another Vlad takes his place. And our Vlad, of course, becomes very unhappy with these developments, gets angry and asks the Sultan for help. Sultan Murad II gives an army to his command and begins to march to the Wallachian region with the army. He arrives and takes back his throne, which his father says has been usurped. However, he will only be able to hold it for two months. Because the other Vlad gathers strength and removes him from the throne. Meanwhile, our Vlad took refuge in Moldavia voivodeship instead of returning to Ottoman lands. There he will wait his time. After a while, a history that we all know very well, Mehmed the Conqueror takes Istanbul. All balances will be restored. Alliances will be renewed. And in this period, in 1456, some expectations of the Hungarian king support Vlad and enable him to ascend the Wallachian throne again. Vlad was a voivode for the second time. It would be wonderful to return to his country. First, he wants to avenge his father, catches all the nobles he thinks conspired against his father, and punishes them in the way he knows best. He puts them on stakes. And after this date, the truth of Voivode the Impaler, and then the legend, will begin. He impales not only them, but the nobles he dislikes, the German merchants he thinks control his country's trade, the rebellious peasants, all of them. The pile enters the anus of men, the vagina of women and exits from their mouths. The victims are left to die, slowly suffering in front of everyone. And of course this created an atmosphere of great horror, but at the same time, Vlad's reputation increased. Vlad's self-confidence grows as he rules violently. In fact, he will suffer from power poisoning. He has agreements with the Ottoman Empire, 
but as we see that Vlad is not afraid of the Ottoman Sultan, because he trashes the agreements. Not only that, he trapped an Ottoman army on the Danube and killed 30,000 soldiers, even by impaling some of them. When this news goes to Mehmed the Conqueror, Mehmed gets angry. He doesn't think that his childhood friend could be so cruel and careless. He decides to send a messenger to him. Hamza Bey will go as an ambassador to convey Mehmed's wishes to Vlad. Voivoda accepts Hamza Bey with his companions. He listens first and then catches them and puts them on the stakes. According to some historians, Hamza Bey went there to catch Voivoda. And since Voivoda had heard of this beforehand, he acted early and impaled Hamza Bey. Did he have to show such cruelty? He could have punished him in another way, but the thought of putting him on stakes and the fact that it came to Mehmed and makes him very angry. Some even say that Mehmed cried because of his greed. He wants a very large army to be formed and he puts Vlad's brother Radu, who is still in the palace, at the head of that army. When Radu begins to march to the Wallachian region with a large Ottoman army, Vlad learns about this situation and will flee and find a place to take shelter. Vlad takes refuge in the Hungarian king. But the Hungarian king greets him not as a guest but as a prisoner in order not to arouse the anger of the Ottoman Sultan, and is imprisoned in a tower in the city of Wyshegrad. But Vlad must be very patient and stubborn because he will patiently wait for his day there for years to come. With the death of Radu in 1476, Vlad will be free again. In fact, the Hungarian king has an expectation. He releases Vlad to oppress the Ottoman Sultan. He even supports him to return to the Wallachian voivodeship. Vlad thus returns to the Wallachian region for the third time as a voivode. But this time, the Ottoman throne took the precautionary measure and established its relations. As soon as Vlad sits on the throne, he takes care of it in an appropriate way and Vlad's head is presented to Mehmed the Conqueror. Vlad is dead, but the legend has begun. This legend will be told in this region for centuries. He was so terrified that his deeds are told from ear to ear like folk tales, written and painted. Among his accounts, it is said that he buried his captives alive in the ground, nailed them and even cut them into pieces, boiled their meat and fried them. Not only that, and it is said that Vlad drank the fresh blood of his captives. Look, there is a belief, there is a tradition. In ancient times, there was a logic to sacrificing, blood flowing with sacrifice gives strength, vitality, immortality to gods and deities. Because both Dracula and Voivode the Impaler were fed with fresh blood, many did not accept that he was dead, and came to believe that he was still alive somewhere. And this legend remained there as a local story until the 19th century. A 19th century Englishman, Bram Stoker, heard the story, was impressed, and turned that local story into a universal hero. The novel Dracula has emerged and has become one of the best-selling, most read, and most filmed works in the world. Bram Stoker portrays Dracula as someone who feeds on blood. When you look at the details of the work, Dracula is Vlad Tepesh, Vlad the Impaler, but he can only feed on blood. Because it feeds on blood, it inevitably gains immortality. This is not a great happiness for him because he loses all his loved ones one by one and cannot go to the spirit world where they are. Because he is doomed to live. A lot of events knit the novel, and eventually, at the end of the novel, the author gives Dracula a huge reward and kills him. His soul will be at peace and perhaps he will be reunited with his loved ones, especially his beloved wife. In Romania today, Dracula is a folk hero. 
and all the places where he lives are places that people rush to visit. The most important is the Bran Castle, near the city of Brashov. Bran Castle, billed as the last standing relic of a man some call Dracula. People go there and wait in line for hours, trying to understand the traces Dracula left there. The most visited section is the section where Dracula's torture instruments are exhibited. This video examines the true life and myths of Vlad Tepes, also known as Vlad the Impaler, who was a ruler of the Transylvania Principality in the 15th century. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe.